Welcome back to International Scale Modeler. Uh, we've got another review today. Today we're going to do something that I've never done before. I've never done a review of one and I've never built one. And it's a Whirly Bird. It's the Airfix 148 kit, the Western Lynx AH7. And uh, this is the Operation Herrick Afghanistan what part of that kit because there's a few bits and bobs that Airfix do for that. And um, this is a helico helicopter support kit. Now this comes with paints and brushes and you know glue that you'll probably never use. But uh, this is actually one of the prizes uh, for our monthly free giveaway next month so I'm doing a review on it which e-models have kindly gave it, given it to me early so I can do a review on it um, but uh, as I say I've never done a whirly bird before so this should be very interesting and there'll be loads and loads of holes that you guys can pick in my review this time thanks a lot <laughs> here comes the review <laughs> Okay, so we've got an Airfix kit. Let's see how we get on with it. Uh, now this is the uh, helicopter support kit and it comes with uh, a paints and um, poly cement. Uh, if you are really into your paints and things like that, you won't touch them with a barge pole. Unfortunately, humble paints, acrylic paints are just really, really thick and goopy. You can thin them down and spray them. It takes a lot of work and a lot of getting used to. So uh, I don't even bother. And the poly cement, well, that's um, old school, old, old school. Uh, anyway, so this is the 148 helicopter support from Operation Herrick in Afghanistan. I think there's a couple of things in this series. This is the Western Lynx AH-7 with some eight British Army soldiers. Box art, Airfix box art, box art, excellent. Love it. It's a nice little scene there. And that itself will make a nice little DO, which I'm sure the figures will match. Uh, so you could do that quite easy on a bit of a thing. So uh, some great scope there. Bit of acrylic rod up in the middle. Uh, else on the box, you've got some warnings, uh, some other rods and sods, and a picture of it all built out on the back. I've got a picture of it all made up and everything. Again, quite nice. It's nice to see you drooping the, the rings. So let's have a look inside the box. Now, a bit, bit weird for Airfix, you've got a side opening box. And let's have a look, let's pull everything out. Is that the lock? That is the lock. Four flying hours on this, very nice. This is not a cheap kit actually. As I say, this is going to be in our a prize in our prize draw next month. Right, so first of all, let's just get rid of the junk. This, apart from the brushes, you can keep the brushes. They're great for weathering and things like that. For me, I would that would be straight in the bin or on eBay or, or give it to someone who, who would use it. But um, not for me, humble paints, I'm afraid. So, but um, if you're just buying a set and you want to paint it and do it, ideal because you don't have to buy any extras. It is all in the box. Um, but if you were going to make this, do not use this. Buy some other glue like Tamiya Extra Thin or. Um, What's the other one? Uh, Mr. S, Mr. Hobby Cement S. I don't use that, I use the Tamiya Thin. But use something like that because this will go everywhere if you use an application like that. If you really must, use the, the Revel Contactor or something like that. Uh, but yeah, there you go, so that's, that's your extras in there. We've got a bag here of uh, figures 
which are completely flash ridden. Um, I'm just going to open this. Okay, uh, they are. It's going to take a bit of work to get them down to an acceptable level. But uh, as you can see, from that you can see that there's quite a bit of burring and flash. The, mo the actual figures themselves, there's uh, a good level of detail on them and some nice poses there. As you can see, the detail itself is actually not bad. You have a look at the rear as well. I think you could probably work with that. There'll be something on there you could do. Um, all the bits and pieces as well, and they all come with a little base um, that you can use. You've got the backpacks, uh, heads, um, the rifles. Um, that's a little bit bent, but apart from that, it's really, you know, if you wanted to do yourself a DO, they're, they're quite nice to uh, to have as a separate thing. And you've got as is airfix's way of doing things everything is in one bag which is a real shame you should just know you're going to get scuff parts so let's have a quick look so as you can see there are one two three large sprues in here and uh, the level of detail is very nice indeed um, there's uh, a lot of raised and recessed detail as I said I don't know anything about whirly birds so um, but uh, overall it looks uh, it's going to be a nice size actually if you look at that um, but uh, there's part of a section of the floor which is raised and it's got uh, undulations in it and everything which is quite a nice touch if you see that so that's going to take a nice bit of weathering as well so i would imagine that's the floor inside the cabin the detail on the rear motor arm very nice indeed and on the main i suppose you call it a fuselage again nice level of detail uh the there's some more flooring there, it looks like some pedals or something on it as well. As you can see they've put these undulations in, in the floor to make it uneven which I think looks really nice. And I I, I, I would imagine the, the floor of a helicopter is like that, I don't know. Uh, you've got the, the bottom of this is really rough. Um, if that's the exterior then that's really rough at the bottom. The actual plastic itself is rough. Um, and it's like that all over actually. Lots of very, very fine detail actually that you can't see unless you get that just in the right light. But um, yeah, some uh, FX, well done, looks very nice indeed. And uh, some very fine parts there. Uh, you've got the uh, landing skis, whatever you call them, I don't know. Uh, exhaust intake, uh, outside, um, exhausts, they're quite nice. You see that's got. See those there, that some fans. That can create a nice effect with that. Um, I mean, it's got uh, a couple of uh, machine guns there as well, which I'm sure that uh, one version will have those on. But uh, there's a nice level of detail all round. The sprues, uh, there's no flash. There's a little bit of burring on them. I've got to say, there's some burring on a few bits of it. Um, not on everything, but uh, you know, there's always usually burring on an airfix kit, uh, but uh, only in places, not everywhere. I'll say <laughs> you've got uh, some nice grills there for somewhere, I don't know where, but you can see the honeycomb detail in that, very nice indeed. So, good level of, of detail, there's a lot of little bits on there, a lot of little parts. Um, and uh, you know, lots of engine housing, things like that, um, rear rotors, 
all one piece, which is which is great. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, a lot of framework, seats, pretty basic. Um, I'm sure the cockpit builds up quite nice as well. Uh, there is again, as I say, the sprue's got quite a bit of flash on it, but um, apart from that, the rotors themselves, it doesn't look like they've got any natural droop in them. Um, there's no ejector pin marks, warpage, or anything like that anywhere as well. So that's that's nice. Um, I think you know, I think Airfix have definitely cleaned up their act and all their new kits. There's still a few bits and bits, you know, where they're wanting in a few departments, but really for, you know, Airfits kits tend to be cheaper than, than most other manufacturers and, you know, that you know that's for a reason. But they are good quality and they're very popular and obviously everyone, everyone who does modelling has heard of Airfix. You know, they're pretty much the most famous of all uh, manufacturers, uh, model manufacturers. Um, but uh, so the, there's no droop in the, in the rotors themselves. Uh, I'm sure that in the picture it depicts that no, there's no droop in these either. Now I would imagine, I like the way they're edged. I don't know if you can see that, but they're actually edged with a different colour. It's quite funky. But uh, I don't know uh, if these are meant to have droop in them. I think all rotor blades have, have droops in them. So I've, there was a method that I saw uh, or heard of somewhere, I can't remember where, where you um, would hold a, a warm... Uh, something warm underneath, not a lighter obviously because you burn the plastic but uh, something that will just so you can make the plastic malleable and just give it a little bit of a droop on there uh, so I would suggest you check YouTube for that because I'm sure someone on on YouTube somewhere will will have that. Uh, clear parts are very clear, very nice indeed uh, I don't, they don't look like they'll be too hard to mask up either. A lot of straight lines, uh, no curved bits apart from the main windshield. Uh, but apart from that, most of it's straight lines, so you're going to be able to mask those up quite easy. They need a bit of a polish because they're a little bit milky. Um, but I think uh, once you polish them up with some micro mesh or something like that, they'll look really nice. And as I say, I suppose they're quite important because it's quite a big piece of glass. Uh, on the kit. Um, now I would imagine you can either have the door open or the door closed on this as well so you can look interior and I'm sure that uh, there are some aftermarket companies that have already got uh, a jazzed up interior for this because it's actually quite a nice kit. So I would imagine that the aftermarket guys will be working, if they haven't done or so already, will be working furiously on this. Okay what else have we got? We've got the decals which is inside a bit of paper instruction sheet so the decal sheet is bent. Uh, that's not a great start is it? Um, so your decals are going to have a natural bend to them when you take them off. Um, but uh, the decals themselves they seem to be very nice indeed um, and unlike a lot of Airfix ones they're cut very close to the actual uh, print itself so there's not a lot of uh, overhang on the, on the decals. Uh, but uh, you've got some instruments here uh, instrument panels, another instrument panel here. The word, the writing, some writing there. I'm just trying to see if I can see it. You can actually read it, um, and they all seem to be in register. Not too glossy, not too flat, so they're just about right. Uh, let's see if I can unbend those for you. As you can see, okay, all oh, very nice. It's just a shame about that. It really is. So it's a bit silly doing that, I would have thought. Why, why fold that booklet up in the first place? It's big enough to, to fit in there as a whole, so that's a bit strange. I don't see why you would do that. But Anyway, FX instructions, black and white A4 page. Uh, let's go through them. Obviously, colour callouts are going to be in humble as per normal. Uh, now, this builds out, obviously, you've got to do the interior first, as with uh, aircraft. Um, but uh, I would imagine you get some aftermarket seats and PE for the for photo etch for the inside. So one of those bits with all the, the undulations in is actually the walls. So there's like the rear bulkhead there by the looks of it. Seat goes in front and then you've got the doors either side. So they're the doors and the, and the rear bulkhead have got that, that pattern in it. So it's really nice. So I would imagine that's uh, padding, baffling um, in a real heli helicopter. Um, as we go on through, as I say, it builds up quite easily. 
it looks like depending on what version you're going to do um, depends whether you drill holes in certain parts of the fuselage uh, but apart from that it goes together quite nicely obviously you know FX instructions are pretty basic um, not hard to understand in the slightest as you see it all goes together you can see the amount of detail and this all this detail is actually on there and that was that rough area you can't really see it though now i've got to say you can't really see that you can just feel it so be interesting to see how that comes that comes out with a bit of paint on it so i would imagine you would do the interior put it together button it up with the doors in place the exterior the side doors in place do the outside then obviously i would use something like this just to glue the doors in front a bit of pva micro crystal clear and that way you can um, just prise the doors off at the end of it and have them open if you wanted to, I would imagine. So that would be the way to do that. And then you've got the, if you're having the gun on it, the gun mounts and everything, if you're having the doors open. Um, but yeah, it looks good. Yeah, the windscreen goes in a little bit later, which is a bit strange. Obviously not with, with regards if you're used to doing aircraft. It looks like the rotors turns, don't glue it. Um, but yeah, it seems to build up quite nicely. You know, it's nothing uh, untoward there. These will build up. Looks like it's a nice little set of details around the rotor engines, the rotor itself. So you can have you can either have wings, uh, rotors extended and ready for flight, or you can have them drop back there for storage or uh, on a ship or something. Like that, I would imagine. And, uh, and you've got these uh, rotor clips, blades, holders, whatever. Um, they're part of the kit as well. They're on there. So that's nice, a nice little touch to have those as well because in real life you would have those. Uh, now paint schemes. You've got uh, the Army Air Corps from Afghanistan 2006, which is that scheme there, which is the one on the box. Again, nice of Airfix to start doing the colour. It's excellent. I would imagine there's more than one version here. No, there's only one version. So it is only the Operation Herrick uh, helicopter and you've got normal stencils and you've got a brief diagram how to build the uh, the uh, soldiers up, the troops and then a colour painting guide for them which is very nice as well. So that will keep you busy for a little while. Um, six figures of those. Eight figures. And three different rifles. Again shows you just how to paint them up. Easy weather there and the camouflage no idea on the camouflage pattern for the for the costumes. But um it's nice that they built those up. Um the the people themselves, the actual soldiers, probably need a little bit of work to get them up together. The helicopter itself looks very nice and it looks to get it looks like it will go together very nice being air fixed as well. Usually they do, they're quite simple. There's a lot of detail on there, you'd have to be careful that you wouldn't sand and obviously you definitely wouldn't go heavy on the paint on that. If you used to use the humbrol paint that comes with it, I'm sure you would lose a ton of that detail on it because it's very, very fine. Um, but if you're spraying on, fine. If you're brush painting, I think there'll be a problem. But uh, anyway, that is the 148 helicopter support um, starter box, I suppose, from Operation Herrick in Afghanistan with the Western Lynx A87 and 8 British Army soldiers. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thanks a lot. I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.